Hey guys, it's Tell Dashua Bushcraft. It is November 8th today, and it is a beautiful Canadian fall day out here. Uh, I am here today to shoot part three in our Easy Field T series. And today we're gonna talk about chaga. Now, when I started this series, I was aiming at plants and trees that were easy to find and easy to identify. One of the things that were common and things that you could feel safe doing even if you know you didn't do this stuff a lot. Chaga is a bit of an exception to that because it grows fairly commonly up here in the north in most areas. You're not going to find it in the south. But I said it when I started this, my whole channel was I want to support bushcrafters and outdoorsmen in my area. So you guys in the south, sorry, tough. What I got standing behind me here is a dead standing birch tree. And on it, there are little black mushrooms or funguses, whatever you want to call them. Now this guy's dead. I'm going to take one of these off so we can get a closer look. If you guys can see this okay. But it's kind of shaped like a horse's hoof and it's black. This is not chaga, but I wanted to show it to you guys anyway so you knew what chaga does not look like. Uh, some people call this horse hoof fungus, some call it false tinder fungus. I call it not chaga. So forget it. Let's go find some real chaga. Alrighty guys, what we got behind me is real chaga. Uh, I don't even know where to start on this one. Obviously, do your own research. I'll give you some hints as to the medical, medicinal qualities of this, but there is libraries written on it. Uh, it is a mushroom or a fungus that grows on birch trees. And I see, there's some debate about whether or not it will grow on some other trees. I don't know, don't ask me. Uh, I actually brought with me today, uh, where is it? Some of my own chaga out of my stash, because I wasn't able to find one on a, a dead standing tree. I was only able to find them on live trees. If I find one on a fairly small live birch who's got room in the canopy and there's nothing interfering with them, I think that chaga could live with that birch tree for another 20 or 30 or 40 years out here. I'm not gonna harvest that one. I wanna find one off a dead standing tree. And I got real lucky today. I managed to find us one. Now, uh, he's at a good height too. He's just above head level. He's gonna be easy to get. I've done some of these where I've had someone standing on my shoulders and we've taken them off 10 feet up off a dead tree. Uh, I'll get this thing down and then we can have a closer look at it. Sometimes they're quite loose and you can just knock them off with your hand. Uh, this guy's on here pretty good. So I think I'm gonna have to use my hawk. Ah, perfect. Ah wow. Alrighty, guys. People will tell you that when a, a birch tree dies, the chaga dies. That's a very dead birch. The back half of him is hollow. You can see right into his core. There's no bark growing back. He's dead standing firewood. But this chaga, all this yellow stuff you're seeing here, this means he's still alive. Anyway, let me reset this camera. We're gonna have a closer look to this guy. Alrighty guys, this here's our tinder fungus. This is about an average size one. This is it just as I took it off the tree. Oh, uh, I don't know where to start. Okay, if you're taking one of these, first thing to do, get all the leaves, bits of bark, and you'll find spiders living in them and all sorts of stuff. Get all that out, you don't want out of that. Now, you can see all this bright yellow part in here. And the outside of it is black and looks like a volcanic eruption. A lot of people don't even recognize these because they don't even think it's a fungus. They think it's like uh, some kind of a disease on the side of the tree. Now, people will tell you that when these come off of a dead tree, they're dead. They don't have to be, not necessarily. That tree was real dead. This thing's still alive, or it was for a little while. All these yellow parts in here are what you would use for tinder, right? They're also medicine but those are the parts that'll work for tinder. The black part's medicine too, but it will not take a spark. Trust me, I've tried. So sometimes when they're dead, they'll be all black and you will not be able to use them for tinder. They are still medicine. If they haven't gone rotten, they're nice and hard like this, they are still good for tea and cooking, whatever else you want to use them for, but the tinder part's gone. So when guys say that ones off dead trees are no good, they're just no good for tinder. Now, if I was uh, taking this home to process, which I will, uh, I'd bust this up into pieces, uh, maybe a little bigger than an ice cube and let them dry. Now right now it has the weight and the density of uh, like a potato. Like if you really squeeze this, you could almost squeeze some moisture out of it. When it dries, it dries up like cork. 
Like it weighs next to nothing. And then uh, from there, I would either, uh, I grind it up somehow. Uh, I've been using my blender lately. A cheese grater will work. You use a food processor, coffee grinder. But we're gonna do this expediently in the field today. So we just need a chunk of this. All right guys, when I was looking for recipes for this, uh, I found dozens and dozens of old school Russian family recipes on how they prepare this. And they range from just boiling it as a tea like we're gonna do, to soaking it for 24 hours, to boiling it and soaking it, to uh, making tinctures with vodka, and cooking with it in stews and all sorts of stuff. But luckily, most of the recipes seem to involve about a 20 minute boil time, which works right along with the standard I set for this series. We're gonna do a liter of water, a tablespoon of whatever our tea is, and a 20 minute boil time. So we just need to get a chunk off this about the size of a tablespoon. There it goes. That's perfect. That'll do right there. Now I could grind this up and make a powder out of it. I could break it into chunks, but it's gonna work fine just the way it is. Let's go get the kettle going. All right guys, our wood stove's plenty hot enough. So put the kettle down. Just like we did before. A liter of water. It's gonna boil real fast on this wood stove. Throw in our chaga. All right guys, this is my new slash old wood stove. I'm still working the kinks out of it. We got somebody uh, donated this to us. Wait, yeah, we got a full boil there. All right, so 20 minutes, and then we'll have something to drink. Huh? Sit. Stay. Right, go. Stay. 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 Get it. Good dog. Good dog. Boy. Good dog. Yes, you are. All right, guys. Our tea has had its 20 minutes out of boil. Let's see what we got here. I'm gonna make myself more comfortable. We're gonna have a cup of tea and talk about this. Oh, no. All right, guys. Yes, hello, Thor. Yes, you're a good dog. Just go lay down for a bit, okay? Go lay down. Yeah. Okay, guys, we got our cup of chaga here. And you can see it's uh, like a medium brown color. Had I ground that up, it would have come out stronger. Probably would have been almost black. Uh, what else do we want to cover? No. Now, I describe this as a strong tea, but it occurs to me, if I drink normal black tea, I take sugar in it, where I take this straight up. So it's probably sweeter than most teas. Let's try this. Well, it's good. It could be a little stronger, but it's good. Kind of think of it, I'm going to keep that big chunk of chaga out here at our camp, so that I'll always have chaga tea out here. I'll hang it up from the rafters in here somewhere. Um, the medicinal side of it. All right, every primitive culture that lived in the north used chaga for something, and they all knew it was a powerful medicine. From like northern China, Russia, northern Europe, all through Canada, Native Americans, everybody knew this stuff was important. They quote anti-disease properties and anti-cancer properties. There's no decisive proof of that. But what nobody will disagree with is that it is a massively powerful uh, antioxidant, like one of the most powerful known to man. It would be more common, but you can't really grow it agriculturally. Like it takes 20 years to grow on a tree in the wilderness. You can't grow a field of them like you could blueberries or other stuff. Uh, by all means, do your own research in that remarks. There's a very good lecture by a Dr. Irvine. I think it is. I'm gonna put a link to it in the description of this video. It's like an hour long and he's kind of long-winded, but he covers a lot of good information. Uh, as far as making it, you saw me make my tea. Um, it's not like coffee. You can let that cool and still drink it. It tastes the same. You could heat it back up and still drink it. It doesn't change. Tomorrow, you could reheat that pot and drink some more. 
good to go. You can reuse the grounds a couple times. I usually add a little more fresh grounds to kind of keep it going because it does weaken over time. Um, it's weird. It doesn't stain anything like tea or coffee will. In fact, thermoses that I've used coffee with for years that are turning black on the inside got cleaned out by chaga. How's that for being an inoxidable? People describe it as being woody. That is a good way of putting it. If you make it a little stronger, it um, it reminds me of going into a forest in the spring or the early summer after it's rained and the sun's come out and things are starting to dry. And it's very humid, but it's not like musty, like mildewy, but it's got that very green smell. This taste reminds me of that sometimes. Um, what else do I got for you? Oh, do not pour the grounds down your kitchen drain. This is important. Uh, it never seems to break down. I've had to clean my drain out and I found chaga grinds in there from weeks ago. And they're still rock hard, like cork. They don't uh, disintegrate like little bits of food would. So don't put it down your drain. Right, guys. I drink a lot of chaga. Uh, I do about a liter a day, which would be like two big travel mugs of it. Uh, I'm trying to replace as much of my coffee as I can. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them up. But that is our Bushcraft Easy Field Tea number three. Uh, remember, please don't take them off of young live trees. Chaga could live for 30 or 40 years on a tree. You know, if you see it's a young tree that's got a chance, leave those ones alone. Find one on a dead tree, one that's standing dead, it's laying on the ground, something like that. So, uh, there you guys have it. Uh, Till next time, go outside. YouTube will be here when you get back.